So this is going to be a quick video about PYT, which is off of, I think, Thriller, the Michael Jackson album. So Thriller and Bad, was uh, both albums were produced by Quincy Jones. And this song has loads of Quincy's sort of uh, harmonic tricks and things like that that he does um, in a lot of songs. So I thought we'd take a look at it. So the first thing I thought we'd look at is the uh, sort of verse material. It sounds a bit like this. So, uh, the first note is B, um, the first chord is this. It's got a minor third, which is minor chord, perfect fifth, and it's got a minor seven, so it's B minor seven. So the key is sort of B minor seven area. Yeah, so we just come up with a scale in the left hand, then you get this. Yeah, we're getting a Quincy sort of world. So what I want you to look at, which ties these chords together really nicely, is this. Right, so in the first chord. Yeah, it comes down a semitone. And into the next chord, a G chord. Yeah, so we've got this descending line through the chords. Chromatic descending line. Yeah, so if I just play the chord. So it's really, really nice. And at this point we could be thinking, well, it's kind of got a minor third, and then a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and a major six. So we're thinking probably like it's Dorian mode, isn't it? Because it's got this G sharp. And then we suddenly get, it's like he's switched from the Dorian mode back into the just natural or relative minor. Yeah, with a kind of normal six chord in those keys. Yeah, so it's like you kind of minor, don't know which in the first chord. And then this is very Dorian because it's got a raised six note. And then we're back into the relative or natural minor. And he ties all that together with descending chromatic line. So you could take some chords and see if you can work um, some magic in it essentially to kind of get the idea. So we could try try going up essentially, you know, like I could start with C and I think well I want a C sharp in the bass. So I might try going to like an A chord. Yeah and then it goes to like a D chord. So you could try weaving in chromatic lines into your chords, bass lines, things like that. So the next part of the song that's quite interesting is the kind of pre-chorus. And it's got a, a Quincy chord idea that he does like, it feels to me that he does it in every single song he ever arranges, writes, or is part of, um, essentially. So it sounds a bit like this, this section. So it kind of sounds like that. And what's going on? So first chord is a G major seven. And then we get this, which if we look in this hand, I've basically got a, you know, if you imagine putting the B up the octave, I've got an E major chord over an F sharp. So it's like, I've got a major chord, but the bass note is the second note. Yeah, so it's an E. So a, a, like a, a, a tone up or a major second would be an F sharp. So I put that in the bass, yeah? So it's an E over F sharp. 
Yeah, really common. Quincy does this all the time. And in this, this is like a trick that I'd say he does half the time of this chord, is that he'll then resolve the E, so it's like the E chord comes up to the F sharp. And so she does in the bass. The bass stays still. So E over F sharp, and then up to just an F sharp chord. Quincy does this all the time. Yeah, if you throw this in, you start sounding a little bit like Quincy. Um, so, yeah, so I'll play it from the beginning so you get this nice. Yeah, and then he does it again. Yeah, so we've got A over a B. And then he goes to like a B dominant 7 chord here. A over B, B dominant 7. So the bass doesn't move, but the chords go, uh, the chords change. So, in terms of what's functionally happening where this tends to fall, is what's happening is the bass is on the fifth degree of the scale. Right? And then the first chord you play in your left hand is chord four. Yeah? And a chord four to chord five, but the bass just stays on five one more time. And obviously this works because if you think about a key, chords four and five are both major. Major, major. Yeah, so it works in a major key, but it works in minor keys because in minor keys, chord four can be a major chord as well as a minor chord. Yeah. Um, so that's what's happening. We might be thinking, hang on a minute, John. This song started out in B minor. Yeah. yeah, and then you're telling me. So this is like chord four, chord five, F sharp, and then if F sharp came down a fifth, so five, four, three, two, one, would go to B. And the next chord we get is a B, yeah, and then we got chord four. Right, so he's like stringing this idea into the cycle of fifths, basically. You get it on an F sharp to start with. Um, so you get that, and we get, so. So there it is an F sharp, um, sort of as the fifth going to B as one. But then we get it, actually this is the fifth going to, well that would go to one, up. Uh, so five, four, three, two, one. But it's not that scale, it's five, four, three, two, one. Because where it's going is E minor, which is the key of the chorus. So this song goes through a load of keys, basically. I bet you don't notice when you listen to it. <laughs> So you got at the beginning. Which is tied together with those chromatic falling lines. And then this section. The G major uh, the G major seven chord is almost like a bit of a a kind of bridging chord really. A bit of a chord. And then we get this E over F sharp to F sharp, and that's called five going to B. But we actually get the same trick called four over five in the bass. Yeah, going to chord five, and then that comes down to E minor, which is the key of the chorus, essentially. And the trick that he pulls the second time through the pre-chorus. Uh, so that's the first time. This chord, B, major, yeah, dominant seven, so it's a B dominant chord, chord five of a key then. And instead of the normal fifth, we're getting a sharp five. Yeah, sharp fives and flat nines um, work brilliant on chord five, which is this is a chord five, going to chord one, where chord one is a minor key. And we do, because we go to E minor in the chorus. So you get this kind of Here we go again. 
it does it all the time, that kind of core four over core five. And you can try and apply this to your songs. What I would suggest is that you don't always have to resolve it though. So if I'm in the key of C. I'm not going to resolve it to a G chord, I'm just going to stick it as F over G. Yeah, and then here we go. How good does that sound, you know? And you can, um, you know, it works really well as a stab as well. really well when you stab it called four over chord or, or over the fifth note in the bass yeah but you can resolve it so if I resolved it I might go yeah so here we go called four over chord five decide to resolve it or not to core five but that is um uh two quincy jones tricks really is chromatic harmony within the chords tying them together and then this uh sort of where you have chord four so an f chord over a g which is the fifth of the bell. key you can resolve it if you want to core five or you could just 